Welcome to the Mind Design Sports Podcast. I'm Brandon, and in each episode, I'll be talking about sports psychology with the guest speaker. If you want to design your sports experience, you've come to the right place. If you want more tips and insights on how to improve your sports performance mentally, check out our website and other podcasts at mind-designsports.com. Cool. Hello, everyone. I have a very special guest today on my podcast, and his name is Aditya Swaminathan. He's an 18-year-old race car driver from Bangalore, India. He drove in the Volkswagen Polo Cup in India and has won his debut race in round one of the championship, being one of the only ones to win their debut race. He's achieved multiple podium finishes in his seven-year karting career, and more notably was the vice champion in the senior category of the X30 National Championship in 2019. Aditi is also a driver coach for Team M Sport in the National Karting Championship. Although I don't know much about race car driving and the terminology associated with it, I'm super eager to learn more about it by talking to you about it, Aditya, and I'm sure the audience will be too. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, no worries, no worries. It's a pleasure to be on the podcast. Um, usually, I'm on the other side of things in terms of recording <laughs> the whole podcast. Uh, I do have a podcast myself, so yeah, it's pretty cool to be a guest for once. Awesome. My first question is, can you talk to us about the format of race car driving and the background um, for your love of it, just for the audience as background information? Okay, so uh, I think um, my interest started in Formula One, you know, I think most people are familiar with Formula One now due to its rise in popularity. So uh, I started watching the races since I was four, and then really it became an obsession. And I was more drawn towards... uh, yeah, the Grand Prix style of events where, you know, the races are like 50 laps or so. Uh, and then, yeah, naturally, I started uh, go-karting. Um, I obviously, like, just like anyone else, I started in your entertainment go-karts, you know, at the local racetrack. And um, this was when I was around seven or eight. And then by the time I was 10, I was in, into the professional two-stroke go-karts which are much more powerful and yeah, they're obviously professional, what the professionals use to get into the sport. So yeah, I started my first, uh, my, my first season in 2014 in the, in the Micromax category, which is for the younger kids, you know, it's, I mean, in India, it's uh, aged uh, eight to 12. And yeah, I was 11 at the time. So uh, yeah, I was, I joined the Micromax category. And from then on, you know, I've been going through the levels in, in, in terms of age, in in, in in India. Awesome. And just like how, like the goal of basketball, for example, is to score as many points and there's five players on each team. What is the like um, format of race car driving? Like how many people are on the course? And obviously the goal is to be number one, but is there anything else that the young audience that may not know should know? Um, uh, well, I mean, the, the whole weekend. So uh, racing happens only on weekends the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So okay. uh, usually the teams come down on Thursday, they unpack their stuff. You, some, it depends on the champion, what kind of championship. But uh, sometimes there might be a couple of practices on Thursday, you know, just to drive around to get a feel of the track and, you know, to perfect the driving side of things. Uh, and on uh, Friday, and there's extra practice on Friday as well. Saturday is usually qualifying. Qualifying basically sets the grid order uh, for the Sunday race, the, for the main race. So uh, qualifying is basically drivers go out on track and they post their best lap time. So, uh, the, so the quickest lap time is number one and the slowest one is the slowest guy is in, in, in last place. So that's how it works. And the race sort of builds on from there. Like they start the race and whoever finishes first is first. And yeah, it's pretty simple that way. But again, depending on the different championships, that could be, you know, two or three races uh, in a single weekend. So the second race might be the reverse order of the first race. Like the guy who started, who finished last starts first. And there's a lot of different permutation combinations with the sort of format of a race weekend. Awesome. Thank you for that. What sets apart race car driving from other traditional sports? Is there something physical about it or the training process is different or is the mental side of it? Is there anything that you think that really sets the sport apart? I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, it's motor sports. So that's definitely as much as that's the human side, that's also the mechanical side. Like as much as you need to perfect yourself in terms of uh, mental sharpness and physical strength, 
or anything the car has to be as good as the driver right like uh, you cannot have an underperforming car it's going to get frustrating and yeah uh, and another thing is as much as people think it's just going fast and like trying to be faster it's it's a, it's sort of like a high speed game of chess uh, because you're driving with you know 20 other drivers who equally want to win uh, yeah. as much as you do and you're driving at like speeds of uh, 180 kilometers per hour. I mean, that's 100 miles an hour, I guess. So you're driving at quite a high speed and you, you need to be able to, you know, uh, develop your own strategy in your mind. And, you know, you need to be able to predict how things would go and, you know, forecast things well into the race. So uh, I feel the, me- yeah, it, it takes tremendous mental strength as well to be able to adapt to so many external factors uh, in a race weekend, like in external factors, uh, there's a almost endless list of ecto- external factors. Like even the smallest things, like you know, the change in wind speed affects the car uh, with the aerodynamics and whatnot. So yeah, there's a de- definitely a lot of different factors to you know to to take in and to process while you're driving at a high speed. Gotcha. How do you prepare for a big race then, like men- mentally and what are some, I guess, mental strategies that you use on a daily basis to help you be the best race car driver you can be? Um, yeah, for, I mean, in my regular routine, I, I incorporate a lot of yoga. Like, um, I practice yoga and meditation. Um, you know, that, yeah, so I've, I've learned basic yoga uh, techniques and, yeah, I just use them every day. And um, I also like to you know, go to the gym, you know, as much as it's a physical thing, I think it's also uh, a mental thing, you know, to be able to overcome, you know, hitting those reps, Mm -hmm. hitting those sets, you know, uh, just breaking your physical barrier for me, it works, it really helps mentally as well. So, you know, uh, before say the season starts, you know, I I increase my trips to the gym, you know, I make sure I push myself through that pain barrier because, you know, that's what you're expected to do in a race weekend as well because, uh, in my experience, there's a, there's a lot of things that can go wrong and have gone wrong for me in the past in a race weekend. And you just have to overcome it. You cannot, uh, you can't afford to, you know, just sit back and sulk on it. Like you need to be able to overcome that. So, you know, going to the gym really helps. Obviously, yoga, meditation, uh, keeping yourself calm and um, really just, you know, broadening the awareness. Like you need to be aware of the state of mind you're in, the awareness of breath, you know, because this, these things will help you um, be aware of what's going on in the car and what's going on with the other competitors as well. So yeah, all these, all these things, all these little uh, uh, tricks I use to, you know, become better. Yeah. Um, at my design, we've talked about how yoga is really uh, helpful. Have you found it to be helpful and how so like, does it help you calm you down or does it help you in another aspect? I feel like um, uh, yoga has definitely helped to calm my state of mind. But in another aspect, it's given me a lot of energy in day-to-day life. Like um, my, you know, like the energy I have, you know, I can do so much more in a day uh, compared to, in say a day, I start off the day with yoga. I can do so much more that day uh, than compared to a day without yoga. So, you know, it gives me a lot of uh, energy. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I think people have like a misconception that yoga just tries to make you really tired, but in reality, it can also make you really energized. So thanks for addressing yeah. that. Um, talk to me about the Volkswagen Polo Cup. You told me that you participated in it and you got and you won first race, but then you said that for the rest of the season it was pretty underwhelming. Do you want to talk to us about that um, whole experience? Oh yeah, definitely. So I came into the Polo Cup with a uh, with like. Tremendous confidence because, you know, a uh, little bit of backstory, you know, obviously everyone knows that the world basically grinded to a halt with the uh, COVID pandemic in 2020. And uh, yeah, so did my racing career for, for about a year and a half. I, I was certain that I was not going to drive anything uh, professionally. So um, yeah, it was, it was kind of tough. But then, uh, you know, late, early 2021, I got news that things were going to open up. Uh, was the end of the year and yeah i decided to drive in the volkswagen polo cup it was a sort of departure from what i would normally do uh, which is formula cars formula cars are like formula one adjacent cars you know that's how they look like 
but uh, polo the polo cup is based on uh, your everyday road car and uh, basically the in india we have the we have a car called the volkswagen polo and uh, basically the volkswagen uh, factory they they prep it up to be race spec they change the engine they modify the they modify everything about the car and make it a race car basically so yeah i i i joined that and it was it was a complete i've never driven those kind of cars before and i go into the first race weekend and i was immediately one of the fastest uh i got pole position which was the fastest in qualifying i won the first race the second race was a reverse grid race so i had to start from behind and that didn't go too well because you know starting from behind is always a difficulty so but overall for my first race weekend there was good and uh i then had the confidence to go on and win the whole championship so the cha- the championship is like uh four races so there's uh, obviously the first race which was done which i won and the second race there was a bit of a gap you know two months gap uh and uh, i went into the second race with the same confidence but uh in 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 the practice i had a big spin and it basically wrecked the car and uh, they had to change most of the parts like the the doors you know the uh they had to change the brake systems and everything but uh the they didn't change this key aspect of the brakes called the brakes ca- brake calipers so that's that's a component inside the brakes and uh in, in through qualifying uh i struggled a lot like uh, the car wouldn't stop basically and uh, because of that i was pretty slow and uh, they then when i told this to them and then they changed it and yeah and then when they changed the brake caliper i was back on pace again uh i came back from the field and finished top 5 in the first race uh but in unfortunately in the second race uh in the first lap i was hit and uh i could i didn't finish in the top 10 which which is obviously a bad result you know if you if you want to win the championship so uh, that was pretty tough you know getting it's obviously a bit of bad luck like uh, it's no fault of your own that you get hit out in the first lap so yeah that was that was tough uh but from then on it just went downhill like uh in round 3 in the third round um i was given i was given basically varying sets of tires like um one tire set would be so basically that weekend we had a uh, a two sets of tires that is uh eight tires in total and uh, the first four were completely off the pace compared to the second four so uh that was something to deal with you know and i couldn't use the second four all the time because uh if i did they would get uh, really worn out and by the end of it by the end of one race the second four already had a couple of slashes on them so the mechanics told they were unusable so that was something i had to deal with which meant obviously this meant that if you don't have good tires you're bound to be slower because yeah tires give you a lot of grip right so yeah so that was something i had to deal with and in qualifying um that was an issue with the the power steering system which meant that uh, i was losing a second in just one corner uh i mean yeah that like according to the data i would have uh, again set pole position if not for the power steering failure so that was again disappointing and round 3 was come another complete uh, white like it was a complete waste basically because i i in another i remember in the second race or so i got hit and then in the third race i was supposed to use the first set and yeah it was just like a it's just a weekend of bad like a consecutive bad things happening and the last round it, like i as if i haven't <laughs> suffered enough basically the in the last round um uh, i think in in the the first phase went pretty well i finished in the top 10 tops i finished 6th place coming from again 13th due to a uh, due to f- brake failure in, in qualifying again but in the second race um i got completely i got completely hit off by a uh, by a driver and i almost uh, yeah i avoided a huge accident and yeah that race was uh, i had to I, i i couldn't finish that race and in the last race again i was hit off by another driver so the whole season you know just fell apart after the second round Oh, that sucks. Did you respond to the adversity and like uh these quote-unquote failures after the season and after the race or 
um, did you just kind of like accept it and moved on? Well, it was, uh, I mean, at the moment I had to accept it. Like I had to drive next race. Uh, but by the end of the last race, by the end of the race where I almost uh, had a huge crash, uh, I refused to drive the last race. It took a lot of convincing by my dad, by everyone around me. Like just drive the last race, and uh, because you've you've got you've already done like you've already raced so much. It's just one more race. I'm like, okay, fine, I'll drive it. But then it turned out to be, <laughs> yeah, it turned out to be pretty bad uh, in the end. But yeah, it was it it's. It was pretty painful and it still is. Um, but yeah, I think you just have to move on. You just gotta you just gotta accept it and like you you need a I feel like I felt like for the first two weeks after the whole season got over, I just didn't allow myself to feel like the the raw emotion of it. And then I realized it, it became unhealthy because it started bottling up in me. But then after after that, after I realized that, I, I allowed myself to feel that and then I allowed myself to move on because you need to feel, you need to really experience emotion. Like, uh, it's, you, you can be, I mean, like, you can't stay happy all the time. You can't stay positive all the time. But you need to be able to uh, experience the negative emotions to, you know, move on to the positive emotions as well. Otherwise, it's just going to get bottled up in you and it's going to, it's going to take away from times when you're feeling positive. You still that, that the pain will still remain when you're positive if that makes sense yeah well said yeah exactly like if you're always feeling happy you won't really know how to distinguish between the true happy moments and other yeah. emotions so yeah. yeah um and then another question i had was like race car driving is unique because you have you're not really in control i mean i guess you're really controlling the car do you think like having the car um kind of change like i guess it dif differentiates the sport like for example like other sports you're usually in control and there's a ball but like in race car driving there's also like responsibility in keeping the car in well shape does that affect the sport in any way or does um does it not really change anything i don't know if that really makes oh. sense but yeah oh yeah yeah no, definitely uh, i mean you're talking about the wire and tear of the car right yeah exactly so yeah you would definitely in a race it's called race management um you cannot go 100 percent throughout the race uh uh, because if you do, the, the car is going to end up, you know, uh, it's not going to give you 100% performance. You need to be able to uh, basically save up for the most important bits of the race. And that's just purely down to uh, the instinct. Like uh, some drivers uh, really, I mean, it depends on where you start as well. Like if you're lower, if you're somewhere behind on the grid, your first instinct is to just sprint up ahead and try to catch up the guys in the front. But after some time, you'll find yourself falling behind because, you know, things get hot, like the engine gets hot, the mm -hmm. tires get too hot. And when, when it overheats, uh, it doesn't give you the perfect performance. So you really need to manage that through the race. And you got to be, you got to be super aware of what's going on and uh, change your driving to adapt to the conditions. I see. Have, the, have you seen or been experienced in one or uh, multiple like big accidents on the race car, like in a race? Um, thankfully, uh, I haven't experienced the uh, huge crashes uh, in a race. Like uh, that's something that, uh, that I'm very lucky for. But yeah, I, I have seen a couple of big crashes where people have broken bones and stuff, which is pretty scary. But uh, Otherwise, you know, the safety of the sport is uh, unparalleled, man. Like, we have fireproof suits. We uh, The cars are really, really safe. So, in a, in a worst-case scenario, you'd have a couple of bruises or broken bones, but you'd walk away from most incidents nowadays. Awesome. That sounds good. Um, and my last question on this kind of race car driving topic is, what have you learned from race car driving um, in terms of, like, mentality or how to live life or really anything um always problem solved like there's a solution to everything uh you can find a solution to everything and i think it's really helped with my problem solving in day-to-day -day life like uh usually like i feel like i'm i can always come up with a solution to day-to-day -day problems in my life pretty easily and that's that i i probably attribute that to my racing career because uh, that's all we got to do, you know, because uh, in, in a race weekend, uh, we're given, we're thrown 
problems after problems and we just have to solve them on the spot that's great advice um and great lesson and i hope like younger athletes kind of understand it because you know there's always going to be problems in real life and you got to really figure out um on your own and with the help of others how to persevere through them yeah. so that's good all right um i wanted to shift to your podcast and your marketing agency so yeah. um talk to me about as41 marketing what does that stand for and um what's your kind of goal with that oh uh, okay yeah this is it's a bit uh, i've never revealed this out to the public yet but uh, as41 is my initials and my racing number as is my initials 41 is my racing number so it's it's aditya swami now than 41 so yeah it's just basically uh, something to help me get sponsorship like i realized that you cannot just sell yourself or like uh, sell sell the sticker on the car like the company sticker on the car no one's going to pay you good money for that they'll pay you little money but that's not enough right so as41 is basically it helps to bring value to brands um through motorsport like there's so many different things that you can do in a motorsport like uh track days you know training events there's also hospitality for other bigger events uh and yeah so on and so forth so uh motorsports is a big avenue and like uh i just uh, my aim is to help uh, brands tap into that i've been lucky to work with a couple of brands so far but uh, i aim to work with bigger and better ones as we as the, as i progress um yeah it's, it's a tough endeavor because firstly like <laughs> you got to send a lot of emails out you yeah. got to help convince people and to be honest uh if i send out 50 emails i get i get a couple replies back so mm-hmm. yeah that's always that's tough but then you just got to keep doing it's a numbers game and uh yeah if you, if you have high, high numbers you'll be bound to get some replies and some positive feedback so yeah yeah i definitely uh, agree on my, that yeah. coming to my podcast uh that that it was it started in the covid lockdown um actually it was it, it was my friend's idea and my Uh, my he was my classmate in in school and so basically uh, he he he's a big f1 fan and he's like he he came up to me he's like you're the only f1 expert i know let's start a podcast and yeah it's called front wing damage it's on all platforms uh and we basically review every race as they go on and you know just go on like completely random tangents it, it's a fun show um it's we're, we're still growing it we're still trying to experiment and stuff but yeah we we aim to grow that into a proper uh media house like a front wing damage media house where we uh create content on all forms of motorsport in india to promote like the younger drivers to promote the whole indian racing scene which has not been given the the attention it deserves so yeah that's what we aim for gotcha and i like how you said that it's a numbers game when they like go to email people because um like for example for myself like when i used to start with podcast i had to email a lot of people as well and you wouldn't really get yeah. um a lot of replies back so i definitely like feel you with that and i think just the message for that is just like if you really want something you're going to have to keep going and being like resilient yeah. with it because nothing's going to be just handed to you on the first try um exactly yeah it's really cool that you're doing a podcast and marketing because those two are really important skills to have one communication and one um just like reaching out and kind of getting publicity on stuff um so i think that's really good for you and um for the marketing are you is that like more of like a business and like trying to make a profit or um is it more of like trying to spread awareness or is it kind of both it's it's definitely profit um okay because the sport is so uh, one thing i forgot to mention about the sport it, it is expensive like uh oh yeah, i'll be really honest my dad like so far my dad has put everything into this uh we've we've sacrificed a lot uh our, our family sacrificed a lot for the sport and uh it is very financially intensive for example i would i would say the my, la- my the last season in, in the polo cup would be about uh i i know the number in pounds i can't convert into dollars if you can excuse me for that uh it was about uh, 15000 pounds i don't know what's that in dollars Uh, I will convert that real quick. Give me one sec. Yeah. 15,000 pounds is $18,421. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, it was it was $18,000 and uh and I I don't have the financial capacity to, you know, spend that regularly. So, it was a lot definitely, 
but so getting sponsorship is really important and uh to give a rough idea of how much a season in a higher level of motorsport say in a formula 3 championship like which is one of the most premier junior uh, levels of motorsport that's about 1.5 million dollars wow so that's not is not accessible to the average person right no one's going to be able to afford uh is 1.5 million plus like there's also a lot of that that's could a be lot damages of money. to the car yeah there could be damages to the car you need extra practice sessions which yeah. need, which don't come cheap uh so yeah 1.5 million dollars is uh you know the uh, f3 championship and the formula one the pinnacle of motorsports uh drivers come in with a 10 million dollar payout or 10 million wow. in sponsorship so it's a, it's a lot of money um so yeah uh so racing is expensive and you know finding a sponsor is super important so i've i've set up these ventures to uh to basically you know just create money for myself and at the end of the day i uh, I need to put food on the table for myself right like yeah uh, so yeah that's definitely i think the business side of things is definitely coming into play the more i get older i guess it's good that like you kind of force you to like find another revenue stream because um like since you're trying to find money you get to learn new skills like you said like podcasts and yeah. the business marketing industry so i wouldn't see it as a bad thing or like a kind of like a hindrance to younger Uh, aspiring race car drivers so yeah um, yeah um and then one like a few more questions is f1 through f3 are those is there like an f2 i'm just kind of curious like yeah that, that is an f2 in between okay. that that's about uh, 4 million dollars if i'm not wrong got gotcha, you gotcha. yeah, so is f1 like more competitive than f3 so f1 is basically like the pinnacle of motorsports uh, it's okay. where the 20 best drivers in the world drive and uh, these have multiple world champions in them uh, i would say it's like yeah i mean this is 20 of the best drivers and 20 of the best cars all the teams make their own car so this is really important they make their own car in factories or uh, they employ people they employ the best engineers in the world you know all these engineers come from the best uh, colleges in italy or uk or the us so uh, these are the best people in the world uh, period and um f2 is a spec series what we mean by spec series is the championship hands out cars and the team basically leases them out and uh, drivers drive them so the drivers are usually younger drivers they're usually 18 to 24 in f2 uh and they are based they some drivers are part of an academy of an f1 team some drivers drive on their own uh so yeah and f3 is below f2 which is again a spec series where you know teams buy lease out the the whole car and yeah the drivers from academies or on their own come and drive them interesting interesting gotcha thank you for that um and then my last question is what would you want to tell the younger audience out there that is looking to get into race car driving um in terms of like any lessons or messages or advice um really anything that you think would be helpful um my biggest advice would be um be smart with where you spend um it's not important to drive every practice session uh at and in the start of course it is to get to get yourself that track time to get yourself time on the track you need to be able to go to every practice session but then uh after a point you need to be able to trust yourself to be able to learn whatever you can in a short period of time and to adapt quickly I think uh because of how expensive the sport is you'll be you will need to make compromises with uh how much you drive and stuff like that so you need to be able to maximize uh your ability in in whatever time you get to drive the car Gotcha anything else you want to share with the audience Um yeah not really I think yeah I've said I've said most of what I wanted to say about the topic so yeah Well, Aditya, thank you so much for joining me. I think it was really cool to learn about. I mean, I personally didn't really know about race car driving before the podcast, but I think I've learned a lot. And hopefully the audience has kind of gained a new perspective since we usually cover more traditional like sports in America, like um basketball and soccer and baseball. So, I appreciate it and um thank you again. Yeah, no worries. I hope I hope I've been a good guest. I hope I've been able to get through uh what racing was clearly. So, Yeah. yeah, 100%.
cool uh, it was really fun it was really fun being on the other side of the podcast so, yeah thank you of course thanks for listening to the mind is on sports podcast before you leave please show some love for the podcast by subscribing liking and commenting stay tuned for next month's podcast with a new guest speaker